If you wish to follow along with the Liturgy of the Word, it can be found on page 1029 in your hymnals. 1029. Please join us in singing our opening hymn, number 492, Jerusalem, My Destiny. Number 492, we'll be singing verses 1 and 2. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we want to welcome all of you who have come to celebrate with us this fifth Sunday of Lent. In a very special way, we want to welcome all of our visitors. We want to welcome the, those watching us live streamed, and those who will watch us later in the day recorded. Now let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. And I fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I accept Blessed Mary, ever virgin all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Now would those going to children's liturgy please come forward. My dear children, today you will learn it is good to thank God for all the food that God has given us and for the many people we share it with. You will also start to learn about Holy Communion. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for all of your gifts, especially the gift of food and the people with whom we share it. Help these children begin to understand what Holy Communion really is. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now you may go to children's liturgy. Go and listen to the word of God. Go and listen to the word of God. God has the words of everlasting reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt, for they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from the least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. A responsorial psalm is number 51. Be merciful, O Lord. We will sing verses 1, 3, and 4.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for life eternal. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now. What should I say? Father, save me from this hour, but it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. That a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, the parish staff and I would like to wish all of you a very happy St. Patrick's Day. In today's first reading, God promises through the prophet Jeremiah to make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. 
A covenant not based on commandments written on stone tablets, but a covenant written in their hearts. If the old covenant was a covenant of law, the new covenant would be a covenant of grace. That is the Holy Spirit living within us. If a biblical covenant is a relationship of love, God is promising a new relationship with Israel and Judah, a more intimate relationship with with them. I've often said that the best test of love or friendship is that two people call forth the best in each other. However, we call forth the best in each other from outside each other. Because of the new covenant, God calls forth the best in us from within. As I read today's second reading, it struck me that this reading could be tied to Jesus' agony in the garden. The author of Hebrews suggests that Jesus offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. In Luke's Gospel, during the agony in the garden, Jesus prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, still not my will, but yours be done. Luke adds a detail that neither Mark nor Matthew includes. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. He was in such agony, and he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. According to Monsignor J. Warren Holleran, the second part of Jesus' prayer does not cancel out the first. Jesus really was praying for his life. Jesus really was praying to be delivered from death. And God did indeed hear his prayer. God did indeed give him new life, a better life, an unending life, but a life that could only be attained by suffering and death. If it can be said that Jesus learned obedience from what he suffered, we can say that God was asking him to love perfectly, to love God perfectly, and to love us perfectly in the one act of his suffering and then dying on the cross. On the cross, Jesus loved perfectly by offering his life to God for us, joining love for God and love for us inseparably. In today's gospel, Jesus teaches that unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. However, if it dies, it produces much fruit. Although he is referring to his own death, he is also referring to us. Unless we die to selfishness and sin in our lives, we never become fully alive. Throughout the Gospel, Jesus tells us that unless we take up our cross and follow in his footsteps, we will not find life. In our own lives, we will experience our own agonies many times. At the end of the Gospel, Jesus said, And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. Jesus is telling us that henceforward, instead of being repulsed by the cross, people throughout the world will be drawn to Jesus because of the cross. And people have been drawn to Christianity through the centuries by Christians' willingness to die for their faith and by their love for each other. My brothers and sisters, today's gospel begins with some Greeks asking to see Jesus. For some reason, we are never told whether they were able to see Jesus or not. I think most of us wish we could see Jesus. The truth is, we can and do see Jesus whenever we celebrate the Eucharist. When we see the consecrated host during the Eucharist, or as we receive communion, we see Christ in sacramental form. We do not see him in human form, but we can and do see him in sacramental form. How awesome is that? Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us pray for the courage to embrace the world in the name of Christ. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that God will transform our fears into hope, selfishness into love, and death into new life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, may the Holy Spirit lead them to peaceful interaction for the good of all people, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of the RCIA and all those preparing for First Eucharist and Confirmation this spring, May they respond in faith to God's invitation into his covenant, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are mourning the death of a loved one, that they may know Christ's loving and sustaining presence with them in their time of loss, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are traveling on spring break, that God will protect them from harm and guide them safely in their travels, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, that through our care they may know of God's love for them and know his healing presence, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our beloved dead, especially for Greg Stroud, the son of Louise Lloyd and the brother of Jeff Stroud, may they experience the joy of salvation made possible through Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Little Flower Parish, this morning's special mass intention, and for all the intentions we recall now in silence. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, the love of your Son led him to accept the suffering of his cross, of the cross, that his brothers and sisters might glory in new life. Change our selfishness into self-giving. Help us to embrace the world you have given us that we may transform the darkness of its pain into the life and joy of Easter. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our gift bearers for Mass this morning are Judy Steffi and Beth Collins.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him, who, he who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our Lenten Baby Bank program is about to come to a close. If you haven't picked up a bottle bank, there is still time to grab a bottle at the door to save your loose change. All bottles should be returned next weekend at one of the Palm Sunday Masses. The bottles should be returned even if they are empty. Join us this Friday for the last fish fry of the season. Whether you drive through or dine in, we'll fill you up with a fantastic Lenten dinner. There won't be any more until next year, so don't miss out. Little Flower School students who attend the fish fry will receive an out-of-uniform pass. Members of the Ladies Club will be at the doors to collect donations for Easter flowers. Please join us for coffee and donuts immediately following Mass in the school cafeteria. Next Saturday, will be the final scheduled confessions before Easter. Confessions will be from 3.45 to 4.30 p.m. There will be no confessions on Holy Saturday. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. We will invite all the children from toddlers all the way up to eighth grade to join in the procession around the church carrying palms. Please be sure each child has a palm to carry. Little flower students who process will receive an out-of-uniform pass. Greg Stroud, son of Louise Lloyd and brother of Jeff Stroud, died this past Tuesday and was buried from Our Lady of Lourdes yesterday. Until he became more seriously ill, he and his wife Karen often attended Sunday Mass here at Little Flower. So please pray for Greg, for Karen, Louise, Jeff, and their entire family. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With you Bow down your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Please join us in singing our closing hymn, number 794, I Am For You. 794, we'll be singing verses 1 and 3.